Hi, it's Colleen Schmidt from Divination Counseling Service here today to present the new moon chart for March 13th, 2021. So we're looking at a moon sun alignment at 23 degrees Pisces, three minutes. There's also a stellium in Pisces. So this is kind of an exciting chart to look at today. And from this chart, we can determine how we might be affected for the next days and even weeks to come related to this new moon. So before I go on, I want to thank you for watching the video. I also want to thank my subscribers. So please like, share, comment, and uh, help the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, before I um, go into this chart, I do want to talk about uh, the fact that I am going to be using Washington, D.C. I'm using it again, but if you happen to be anywhere else in this country or out of this country, you're going to be looking at a chart that looks very differently. It will still have a stellium. It will still be 23 degrees Pisces, three minutes. However, it may have a different house structure depending on where you live. So because of that, I'm going to look extensively at the axis of the sun and moon on the dial, and I'm also going to look at the Aries axis so that we can see from a larger perspective how we could be affected through this chart. So let's go look at what I have set up for us here. So we see here the chart. Now again, this is Washington, D.C., but I want to make a note of a few things before we really dig in. First, I want everyone to note that we have a stellium going on in Aquarius. There, well, not really, I'm sorry. The stellium is actually in Pisces, okay, because there are legitimately four points in Pisces. Now, Aquarius looks like it also has a stellium, but I don't really feel that we want to include the Par of Fortune, though I thought it was really interesting that in this chart, the Par of Fortune is sitting um, exactly on the ascendant in the Washington, D.C. chart. So I thought that was pretty interesting uh, just to start off with that everything, and you can see it very clearly, shows up only on one half of the chart. And it's all marked out with the nodes. So the nodes begin this whole series of everything falling on the left side of the chart, if you will. So the houses, we're not gonna put a whole lot of emphasis on them, okay? I just thought it was interesting that we're looking at the 12th and the first house. Um, and the only other thing that I'm going to be talking about a lot is Uranus. Now, in this particular chart, Uranus is the ruler, okay? So it is ruling this chart. And the interesting thing about the DC chart is that Uranus is falling into the second house. And that is our values, our money. So there could be some changes in finances that could be happening for many of us in the next month. Now, does that mean it's good or bad? I think that's going to depend on the individual. I think that with the power of fortune sitting there in the ascendant, it looks pretty good for those of us who live within the vicinity of Washington, D.C., in that it, the power of fortune sits right on the ascendant and the ascendant ruler being Uranus, okay? But I also want you to note that Uranus is still squaring Saturn, okay? And that is, as I pointed out on many charts, a continuation of anxiety. That's an anxiety creator, okay? So that is going to make the energy of that chart a little bit more tension related. There's a lot more tension involved in that. The, the, I'm going to look at the um, 
aspects a little bit later. I kind of wanted to look at the Janus because I wanted us to look at the shape of the chart. There's a couple other things I want you to look at. I want you to look at, and I can get my pen going here. Why don't I get my pen going? Okay, so what we're looking at here, first of all, is a lot of sextiles, okay? Now, we got a couple of squares. We got an opposition, but that's, you know, the Mars to the south node, but Mars is also conjuncting the north node. So uh, if you remember from my lecture on the nodes, it's really hard to pinpoint what is going to transpire there because the Mars is also in a positive aspect to the nodes as well as a negative one. So it's really always a much more in-depth or complicated reading when you're looking at a node because the node comes with positives and negatives right in it because it's an axis in and of itself because they're always in opposition. Now, the squares that we're looking at would be the square and it's an out of sign square. So I, I want to point that out. It'd be the square to Mars. Okay. So the, when it's out of sign, it weakens it a little bit because it's as though the ascendant at 26 degrees, 56, almost 27 degrees. Uh, when I start my horary, uh, a lot of people will know this would not be a good horary chart. It's only four minutes from one of the strictures, and I'll get to that when I give that lecture. But 2756 does emphasize ends of cycles, and we are coming to the end of the pandemic. I think some people are jumping the gun. Some states are jumping the gun. It would be really interesting to look at what this chart would look like in Texas or uh, one of the or Mississippi, one of the other places where they think they should open up. It's crazy. We are in a better place, but we'd be in a much better place faster if people followed the rules. But unfortunately, in a country as large as ours, with so many different states, having so many different ideologies, that makes it difficult. But it would be interesting to see where the stelliums fall. The, um, the chart itself, though, is loaded, loaded with sextiles. And sextiles, though they're not considered a very strong aspect and they're very difficult to see in a dial, they are still opportunities, creative opportunities. And there's a tremendous amount going on with even Pluto and the sun and the moon. So the transformation concept is still very much active. Uh, sun and moon equaling um, the Pluto is a very interesting, or, you know, uh, sextiling, is a very interesting position because Pluto is transferring, as uh, is, is transformation, and the moon and sun represent hourly and daily transformations, as this case would be, and later we'll be talking about Uranus. But also, the sun and the moon there for this new moon are helping to continuing the concept of transforming who we are as people and transforming what drives us, transforming what makes us emotionally secure because our moon is our emotional security and the sun is our, is our drive, okay? Now, what makes this sextile even more interesting is that all of these are an aspect to one another. That between 19 degree Venus and that 23 degrees of sun and moon is only four degrees apart. And that puts it very clearly in aspect, particularly when you're discussing the fact that Neptune is only one degree away from Neptune. And Neptune is only or less than three degrees away from the sun and moon. So you see how that makes it even stronger. And a couple of things to point out here. First of all, realize that with the sun and the moon running with Neptune, I'm looking at a lot of mixed messages, okay? And it gets more so if you incorporate that 26 degree 
Mercury uh, ascendant. Okay, that 23 degrees is a little bit out of range of an inconjunct, uh, though some astrologers would keep it there. Okay, that Mercury. What I'm concerned with is that there's a lack of clarity with the sun and the moon when Neptune is sitting on top of them. And what I mean by um, there's like a lack of understanding when you're so close to the sun and the moon. And one of the things I'm worried about with this lack of understanding is finances, Venus. The other thing, and you know, we just had um, a couple trillion dollar uh, package go through, which, you know, most Americans are really, really happy about. And that Uranus in the second house does indicate that. But it makes me wonder, some of the stuff we're hearing, is it true? Is it not true? And, you know, it's an interesting thing, and I do believe this is true, that as uh, the Saturn and Jupiter begin to really embark in this continuing new cycle that they're creating, the idea of transparency and being truthful will be, I'm going to say, foremost in our minds, which means that people are going to have to be more honest about what is in packages, what is happening uh, to the people. And um you know, like the people saying on one side that, you know, the Democrats threw a bunch of other stuff in there. Well, if they threw stuff in there for infrastructure, I don't really think that's a bad thing. And if they threw stuff in there to help empower the infrastructures on any level, I don't feel that people will be upset. But the other side... Um, is not going to let up. So uh, their gaslighting has been going on for many, many years, and I, I don't think that's going to stop. However, could it lead to more transparency? I'm hoping that it does. So I have a optimism going on there. So other things to look at in here. Mars has now approached and has gone into Gemini. And Mars in Gemini, hmm, not the best place for it. And, we'll, and I'm going to talk about rulers in another lecture I'm going to do with Horary. So here, Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Mars is not a thoughtful planet. It is not thoughtful at all. It's very reactive, actually. And in Gemini, it here we go again. Are we reacting to what we're hearing and if we are, are we on the right page? Because again, one of the biggest concerns that I have with our government, and I know that I talked about the black moon, ver, uh, you know, um, re, uh, opposite the moon in the United States chart, and take a look at it if you'd like, but it does make us always as people skeptical of what our government's doing. And I believe that we should be. They go through an awful lot of money, and not the money that's coming to us, but money in general, black money or dark money, as it's called. We, taxpayer dollars that we're going to find out went bazillions to, like, people that it shouldn't have. And I'm not sure, you know, if that'll continue under Democrats or not, but I can tell you that our guard is up as people. And when I see Mars in Gemini, and I'm looking at a DC chart, it is an interesting concept here that there could be some kind of pointing fingers or looking at, uh, you know, Mercury or what you're hearing news. Gemini. That's, you know, and look, the, the, the 18 degree Taurus uh, black moon is also there and it makes me wonder if there won't be some issues regarding media or news or news outlets. Um, I, I personally believe it's time for even more news outlets and more competition with regards to news outlets in terms of following uh, the guidelines and laws of the press, meaning 
excuse me, and I'm, I'm sorry if I offend anyone on this, but including Fox News, which is not a news station. So I don't understand how they can put that in their title when they are not listed as news broadcast, broadcast news. They're actually opinion slash entertainment. So I think that, you know, that has to be more readily, things like that have to be more readily open to the public. Now, I also have heard Rachel Maddow, who does like completely the other side, she has to follow the rules. She's been told that. So it's just interesting how some media has to follow the rules and others don't. The other part of the media, which I think is really important to point out, is that it is owned predominantly by right-wing affiliates. Yeah, because on the left, I don't think there's a whole lot of money. (laughs) Well, I don't know. I shouldn't say that. I know there's some people who are left that have a lot of money, but they don't seem to be in that business. So, But it is interesting, and I want to look for that because that's third house. So this is all related to Washington. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. I did want to point out the stelliums. I wanted to point out that we're looking at hidden factors, okay, which is what all of this represents. They're hidden. Why are they hidden? Because they're about things that are not obvious to the people. They're in the 12th house, which is also house of spirit. But since it's ruled by Saturn, Capricorn, and Saturn also has to fall there, I believe some secrets could come out uh, related to government. I think we're at the beginning of a lot of secrets coming out, if you look at this chart. Um... Are people happy that it's coming out? I think that they are. I really do. And the first house and the confusion could be how some people will be confused about their own identity or what they're identifying with. Okay? So I just wanted to look at that very briefly. I really want to move on because I did most of my prep work this time with uh, the... Asteroids. So I want to pull up the other chart right away. Okay. I want to look at, now we're looking at the full chart and it's irony because my other computer actually has more asteroids than even this one, but I did bring my list. So we're going to be looking at the asteroids, um, but I wanted you to look first at this house. The other thing that I want you to look at, and this is really important Remember I pointed out the black moon, and I know we're talking a lot about the black moon and the, and the white moon, and I know not many people have seen those videos. I would encourage you, if you have a little bit of time, to go and look at them, because I did use them in the United States charts. These are United States charts, and I want to point out the karmic factors that are related to, or which we some people don't like the word karma, but the factors related to what they bring in uh, with regards to both the black and the white moon. The white moon this time is falling right inside the 10th house. And that's an interesting place because that means that whatever is going on, it's a nemesis. Whoever and whatever is working in that, and it could be deals that they're working up with that Juno up there, there's a sense of, I have to follow the rules and take care of this, which is actually wonderful. Now, how they're taking care of it may be in the rule system or in the government itself, because down here, the white moon, which is not opposite, ironically, okay, because one is in Sagittarius, so it's a learning moment. I'm always going to think of that when I think of Sagittarius. Uh, as long as people don't have really big egos. What's really sad is, is that some of the really good stuff that's coming in is being bashed. And the reason why I say that is because it's good karma, it's well-deserved, but it's running with the South Node. It's not being appreciated, it's not being acknowledged, and in fact, it could even be And this is where I go back to the political stuff. I I actually hope in years to come that we're not looking at two parties. And I know that there are people out there cringing going, what? No, I think that two parties have ruined 
this country. They have ruined it, particularly since the time of Reagan, who in my opinion has a lot to account for. So when you're talking politics, our politics is we should do like every other country and have a coalition and not two party system. I think that, you know, working with five parties might work better. So I apologize. We had a, I had a client, so um, we took care of it. So just getting back into this, I really, I really want to start looking at the black and the white moon. It doesn't get enough credit for what it represents, what they represent and what they are to us. The um, other thing I want to point out here, right on, right on that midheaven, is the idea of blame. Placing blame. Well, there's going to be a lot of blame placed on some good karma, and it's oppressive for that karma. So I, I definitely want to talk about what that is, um, and it could be a number of things. So realize that I'm talking about it from a government perspective, uh, but... If you lived in California, you're still probably looking at a connection between the South Node and the White Moon, and you're probably also looking at the White Moon in aspect to Nemesis, okay? That's that little point right up here, okay? So I'm looking at the midheaven of this chart. As you can see, even when you put everything in here, there is not as much on the descendant. There isn't anything on this side of the midheaven, nothing that aspects. So you really, you really are looking at a, uh, a, what I like to refer to as a left uh, hemisphere, if you were, the left side of the chart being extremely full. And if you look at what that represents, again, I'll go through that. It's the 12th house and the first house. So the house of spirit and then the house of I am. And the sun and the moon both are in the house of I am. So I thought that was really interesting. But the real fun is going to start now. So let's get into looking at the list and our aspect list is, in, is interesting because I'm going to make a note of this. Look at this. These are in conjuncts, both to Saturn and Uranus. Uranus is going to come into play big time. But this is what I was referring to, the conjunction to Neptune and the conjunction to Venus. And it would be exactly the same down here because they're in the same place. And I did talk about the sextile to Pluto. So they're not heavily aspected, but they have some real interesting conjunctions, which then form a stellium. Now, if you had a stellium in a personal chart, that's considered genius. Okay? It also means that there's an unevenness, there, that a personality might be very heavy in one direction and perhaps um, lighter in others. In other words, not, they don't, it's not a big spread. The um, In the chart, though, for the new moon, it kind of makes me wonder if we're not going to be basically really as people, as the moon, if you will. We're going to be really kind of concentrating on, you know, that one part of the chart, that left side of the chart, if you're in D.C., but realize if you're in California, it might be all the upper horizon. It could be all the bottom. So it'd be worth looking at the chart wherever you are and see how it changes. The other uh, kind of strong aspected area, so the sun and the moon are important, and we're gonna come back to them because we're gonna do a whole axis. Now, as we get into Mercury, which is another really interesting, not a lot of aspects as you can see, but the aspects that are there are a lot of conjunctions, like conjunctions to the ascendant, conjunctions to Pallas, which by the way, Pallas conjunction and the parallel to which is business. So again, news about businesses and strategies used by businesses are going to show up regardless of where you live. The same thing with the Venus uh, conjuncting the moon. Okay. Now, the problem that I have with Venus conjuncting the moon and then also conjuncting the sun is that sometimes Venus, which is about relationships as well, is also about being selfish. 
Why not? It's our value system. And the Venus uh, connection can sometimes make us very selfish. That is not always a bad thing. So I'm not going to say this bad. I'm not going to say it's good. Some people need to be more selfish. Some people need to think more about themselves. Uh, others, maybe not so much. So that's going to be a big factor. I also feel with the opposition of Mars to the midheaven, at least in this chart, that the focus is not going to be on um, the outer world, but on the individual and families fourth house. So that's really important. Now, the uh, rest of them, and I'm just showing you that conjunction of Neptune, which I already briefly spoke of, then we have our uh, Pluto aspects, which are fairly numerous in this chart. A lot of uh, in conjuncts, a few squares. Uh, we have a lot of parallels. Now, parallels are seen as conjunctions, just as contraparallels are seen as oppositions. And the Pluto, with this many aspects, is only conferring that we are going through the great transformation, that this is about a transformation, that we're transforming who we are and how we're seen in the world. And that is a Washington, D.C. chart but it can be taken on a personal level for anyone who is living in this area. Okay? So again, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the outer chart with the exception of giving you uh, a good lesson in some of the things that might come to your attention. So before I leave it, just to start talking astrology uh, asteroids, I want to point out that Lilith is the first... Uh, Mercury is the last right before the Ascendant, right on it within, um, looks like 11 minutes. The uh, within two degrees is the Lilith. And I have my, here, let me put my pen on. Lilith is decisions, okay? So Lilith tells us that there's going to be a lot about decisions in this particular month. And some of those decisions will be blamed. Okay. Well, government wise, they're trying to do that already with trying to take powers away from governors, which I think is ridiculous because I really feel that they've done a great job. But the, again, the Republicans represent business. They, they don't really represent the people. It's not the, uh, how do I put this? It's not their um, way. So they can tell you they represent the people, but they really don't. They represent business. They are, they get their money from businesses. They vote in favor of businesses. And when decisions are made that are more about the people, there can be a lot of criticism. You know, it's really interesting how um, they don't even want a $15 an hour raise. And some of the businesses are doing it on their own, which I think is very commendable. But it comes down to who are they here for? Us or them? Well, it's very clear. They're not here for us. Okay. They haven't been. And I, I just think that's really interesting. I think it got worse during the time of Reagan. But I think it's always been like that, at least as long as I've been alive. I know the Republican Party's been hijacked a few times. But the hijacking seems to be more revolved around being more corporate and corporate, you know, uh, in terms of voting for corporations or allowing uh, the government to deregulate corporations. I think it's a bad idea because corporations tend to rape and pillage the people and they try and turn their workforces into slave forces. Um, by not paying them enough, by requiring uh, ridiculous amounts of hours, you don't do the overtime, you get fired, etc., etc., etc. There is a need for unions, I believe, in this country again. And I did say at one time in the 70s, I thought they were bad because they had the balance of power was no good. Um, but there, there is a place for unions. I believe that. And I think that as long as unions don't end up being like a corrupt government, they can work for the people. 
So that's only my opinion, though. But I do believe there's going to be a lot of blame placed regarding decisions. And the interesting thing is that regardless of uh, regardless of, of you know the scenario, this um, nemesis is still playing out with the nodes and the the white moon. So that's not going to change in the chart. Lilith might not be on the ascendant, but Lilith would be something that I would look for and watch for in any chart that you did, because I think it's going to have a valuable statement to make regarding, in particular, Nemesis. Okay? Um, at 28 degrees, Lilith uh, of Aquarius, um, and it's still in aspect uh, to, um, I'm just trying to, the, yeah, I'm just, I'm looking ahead here, guys. Yeah, it doesn't play a lot. I mean, it's not playing a lot with other things. The, it's, you know, in an in conjunct, I wouldn't use it because it's five degrees out. And when it comes to oppositions, we got nothing there in Leo. When it comes to squares, I guess our closest would be Shiwa, okay, which is decisions about reconstructing or destruction, reconstructing or uh, withdrawing. So especially with new businesses uh, or not new businesses, but businesses that want to resume or they're creating a new identity for themselves. Boy, I think what some people are doing, especially with their restaurants, is just absolutely phenomenally wonderful. And um, but again, you know, there's decisions to be made. So there's still a little activity happening with that Lilith regardless. Okay. And that's Lilith, the asteroid, not Lilith, the black moon, just so that you're understanding of that. Okay. Now, what I really want to do, and I keep putting it off, but what I really want to do and the meat of what I want to do is all going to be done here. And I have written down a few things I want to look at. The first thing that we want to look at is that um, we have an axis at 2303. So we're going to go to 23, right here it is, 03. There's your first, oops, let me, let me just give myself a couple of, I want to go to the exact point, okay? There it is, right there. So as we come to that exact point, and I am going to use my tool here, is that look at this. I wrote about that. That is stressful. That means there's going to be, remember I talked about the lack of clarity because all of this up here is in conjunction, okay? There's a lack of clarity because of Neptune, all right? We already discussed that. And that lack of clarity um, is going to cause tension. And it's going to cause tension on a daily and hourly basis because of Uranus. Uranus also tells us that there are going to be some issues with, um, we're going to have some issues with friends. Let me, oh, let me pull this down. I just want to make absolutely sure. I'd like to know what I'm talking Yep, it's Uranus. Oh, geez, it's like three minutes out of the axis. So it's it's really in there. And the beauty is, though we're going to experience some tension, Uranus is about freedoms. It's about the outer structures. And maybe the confusion is, the Neptune is, is that the outer structures are causing the tension. So one of the things I want to point out about this, oops, there we go, right there. Let me put it there. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get my tool out again and continue from there. So, so you have this dynamic, okay? But in here, and this is a midpoint. I, I'm excited because a lot of people have been looking at the midpoint videos. Midpoints are really interesting, and they're a phenomenon in astrology. But a midpoint is not the same as an aspect. A midpoint has to have 
two things come together to equal one rather than this sun and moon on this dial equals Uranus. It equals it. It means it's like right there in aspect to it. Whereas the Pluto and Jupiter are a combination energy that comes together at Uranus or at the sun and moon. And basically what that is telling us is that we are transforming in a way that is healing. Because this is actually really good to have. Okay? And Uranus is an indication that the change, that the tension, that the disruption, that the unpredictableness is taking us in the right direction. We are transforming in a way that we can expand and heal. Well, that's happening in part because of the vaccinations. So I thought that was really, really interesting. Now, on a personal note, things that you might want to look at are some issues with siblings of partners. That's just a mundane thing. I'm just throwing that out there. And why am I throwing it out there? Because of this, all of this up here. Okay? And Urania, which is astrology too, is also playing in, or logical thinking, with regards to um, partners, which is Juno right there. And the surprise is Pandora. So there could be some surprises related to logical thinking, computer technology, and anything related to Urania. And with Eros not far, there's some excitement about it, which is really, really nice. So that's your first, and also, you know, unresolved issues with connections, people who don't follow the rules. Yeah, we can see it all there, right? But that's only half the axis. The other half of the axis is here. Let me see if I can, oh, let's go and get it, okay? So that's only half. Here's the other half. And now would be about 57. So let me go a little bit higher. Oops, that's lower. Let me go a little bit higher. Okay. Now we have being on our own, going something alone, requires a little strategy, okay? Yeah, and this point over here, which I did not write down, which I want to do right now because it's going to be a part of my work here, would be 1603. And that's cardinal. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up some asteroids. Handy dandy list. And we're going to look at, at, look at how beautiful this looks. That creates a star. That axis creates a star. And not nothing's going to be resolved. Really, nothing is going to be resolved yet with Astrea up there at the Aries point. I'll get to the Aries point in a moment, but I really did want to look at this. So we're starting off with um, the fact that people have to do something or go about something on their own can be related to health, a health matter, but it can also be related to the fact that there could be some issues with sleep uh, anxiety, and things of this nature. So the health issue doesn't have to relate to the virus. could be a mental health. Uh, that is requiring that people kind of go on their own or do something on their own. The, um, the other aspects of what we want to look at would be, <laughs> why does this come up a lot? Why are people using scapegoats? This is really interesting because, and I want to talk about this, because Uranus is falling, Uranus is in this aspect. We've already talked about how it's in play here. Okay, I already showed you that. But I, I want to point out that scapegoat, remember we talked about blame? 
Here's the other one that's here, scapegoat. So there's this idea of uh, scapegoat uh, related to defeat and unlikely couples or relationships, okay? Or how odd people are coming together. And I think that's going to play a role in, at least on our personal charts, okay? The um, mutable, we're looking at... The fact, <laughs> this is interesting, sleeping issues are going to be pretty prominent in the next month. And I don't know why that is, except for maybe it's part of the healing. Maybe it's part of the excitement that we are finally healing on some level. Maybe, you know, it has to do with that. Um, but what I'm getting with regards to that, which is so interesting, is I'm also getting some issues regarding marriages, that's what it's, they're saying marriages. I'm wondering about partnerships. But now the partnerships did show up already, okay? But this is a different one. And it talks about hypnos, bano, viper. Okay, so the viper is coming into play with the, um, the idea of, you know, is it because of a partner that people can't sleep? Maybe there's a difficulty. The sleeping difficulty is really a partner's more than the actual person. And how is that a viper? But it would be definitely, in other words, it's a point of contention. It's something to look at. So that's an interesting little side note on all of this. The, um, it's all happening in a house or it's about a house and they're, I'm one of the people dealing with buildings and houses this year. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even looking forward to it with any excitement at all either. But, um, you know, there's a lot of people in my position. You know, people, when you're stuck in the house all the time, you do see a lot wrong. And although I don't know that was all about what happened with us, but, but at least part of it. The, um, so house is playing in to the whole thing. And um, in the, in the, the uh, brace yourself. That's what I want to say here. Brace yourself. Be careful also of falls. They probably won't be bad, but I guess Mick Romney just took a fall not long ago. And we all found out about that. So if we're looking at Washington's chart, maybe that just appeases it. Uh, I personally have taken a nasty fall. Fortunately for me, all my years of dancing, I... <laughs> One of the first things they teach you as a modern dancer is how to fall. So um, I was unhurt, but to fall like that is such a shock. So be careful of falls because not everyone is going to be able to handle a fall. Um, let's see. What else do we see here? And the fixed. I'm in the mutables. And we're back. Okay, so... Our next round would be in Cardinal again. Ah, oh, it's fixed. Ornamenta. Yeah. How many of the things that are going on right now, and especially things that are going on in the house, are about ornamental? It's about making things look better. It's about what things look like. It's about um, ornamental, sometimes just doing things because of the way that it looks. So that's definitely going to show up too, especially with house. So that really does play well. At least I believe that it does. So then we come all the way down. Uh, animals will play a role. Pets will play a role in what's going on. Maybe even wild animals. We might be seeing more, uh, unfortunately, animals that um, are on the road. Um, so please be careful of them. Um, if you can, because that could definitely be what they are talking about here. And in the, yeah. Also, um, Hestia tells us that there is going to be a focus on goals and work. And I'm wondering, again, if these goals and work aren't related to the house or a building. Okay. And ornamental. Here we go again. So that makes an incredible amount of sense. Let's see. I'm going to skip through that. We don't need. 
You know, it's interesting because uh, Saturn um, is still playing a role in all of this, uh, but uh, you know, it's it's it. Saturn and Uranus are going to be doing this dance for some time, and it just increases the amount of anxiety that we have in our lives. So take up meditation, hike. The weather around here is getting beautiful. And I just gave advice to a client. Go meditate. Go hike. Get in touch with the earth. Get grounded. Be realistic. Try not to become anxious. That would be the best. We're looking also at taking plunges and making sure that you've done your homework before you take a plunge. If you're going into a new thing or if you're going to try something new and you're going to take that plunge, and I, I, a lot of people will, just make sure, because it feels so destined, you know, there's a destined with the plunge. It's like, yeah, it just feels like, ugh, I got to do it. Make sure that you do it with palace, strategy and planning. I think that would make it more successful and more helpful. The other thing, that there's two things running with the sun and moon which should be talked about. One is that because of our lack of clarity, there can be some humiliating moments. So please be careful, okay? Be careful when you open your mouth. Be careful who you're talking to. Be careful what you say. And one of the things that I get is one of the ways in which you can get better clarity and that you can really work with this chart a whole lot better is to break things up in pieces. Don't, especially people trying to work on a house or a building, do it in small increments rather than big projects. Don't think of it that way. Somebody, I was telling somebody once years and years ago that I had old fashioned colonial windows and I had to clean my windows. And I hated those little panes. And she said, well, you know, the old saying is you just do it one pane at a time. Okay. So the little squares, just one at a time in pieces. It's the best way to get through a lot of things that way. Um, when it comes to, I'm looking for um, trans-Neptunians at this point don't play a whole lot in that point of the astrology in other words the sun axis they do have her play a bigger role in the aries axis which i'm going to get to next so we just went through a chart and looked at a way of reading it now i'm going to go and i'm going to read it again so this time i'm going to start by pulling my chart to the aries point i'm going to go back the amount of degrees necessary and one of the things that you get right away is, is that sometimes it'll be partners who are not playing by the rules. Okay, just bear that in mind. Also bear in mind that the black moon in this particular case is falling in the Aries point axis down here very, very close to Poseidon. Okay, again, please watch what you're listening to. Do your homework. Do your due diligence. Don't just believe it because you saw it on TV. You know, what's really interesting is I, I'm a news hound. I'm a, I'm very into politics, um, have been my whole life, not a political astrologer. I think they shoot me. Um, cause I'm so very strongly opinionated one way or the other, but one of the things I'm sure you couldn't tell one of the things that, um, is really, really impactful here is that there's a lot of bad karma associated with the press right now. And um, that is going to play out, I believe, in the next month. Black Moon Lilith, right down there with not far from Lilith, okay? And let's just, just to get the degree points because I wanna show you how close they are. Black Moon Lilith is here at 15 degrees. I believe it's 35 minutes, okay? It's less than a degree. Where you have up here in Scorpio, so that's in Taurus, all right? That's in Taurus. Whereas what we're looking at is in Scorpio, okay? Here it is. It's opposing it naturally, and it's less than a degree apart. And the um, and I do believe it's the news that's getting it and the reason or the propaganda um, or it's coming out through the news and other uh, headlines is because of the retrograde on the Poseidon. OK, 
but it's about some bad karma, bad things, things that, you know, here we go with, we just left a material age and many people who are here are here because of this attraction to the material. I'm not really one of them, so I can't, I've always been a weirdo, always. I just feel more myself now that we're starting to change ages because I've never been motivated by money. Um, and anyone who knows me knows that's true. And it's a sad story because I should be more motivated by money. But I'm not as much about the material age as my counterparts, my people who are in my age group, particularly, because I am older. And I feel that that the material stuff, and, and if you can see this, this is in Taurus. This, you know... People are human. And that means that if they get tempted, it's easy for them to become drawn to not taking the high road or making the best decisions because they're motivated by money and their decisions will show that motivation. And people will say to me, well, how do you live by not being motivated by that? Because you got to eat, you got to pay the rent, you got to pay your taxes, and you got to do all that. I agree, I know that. I've lived my whole life like this. And there are times when I've lost sleep not knowing how I was going to pay the bills. But I will be honest with you. Spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, has never let me down. I have never suffered other than losing night's sleep. But I remember a time when I needed a lot, a lot of money. I was fairly young and I had to make a mortgage payment and I had to do, do you know that money showed up all in time? And it was, we're talking a couple thousand. And when you're somebody who's poor, that's a lot of money, but it happened. So you don't have to be motivated by money. But again, because we've just left 200 years of materialism, it's going to be a hard karma to shake. And in Taurus, that's, what we're dealing with money corruption because of money people who don't pay their taxes because of money so it always goes back to i'm going to break this law because i need this money i'm going to lie to this person because i need this money that is black moon lilith and the attraction is material be aware of it people Younger people, maybe not as much, but it's still going to be around you because you're still living with people my age. And I am sometimes appalled at decisions made by people my age. And I know they're doing it because of money. Okay? Even their choice in who should be president is based in money. And I think that's very sad. So that's just my take. Again, very political. Um, but look for it. Look for it in your life. Look for the people that you've seen go downhill, not because they're doing drugs, but because they've got corrupted by something related to material or finances. Okay, so let's go back to our where I left off. I got off on a little bit of a black moon thing again. I'm really into the black and the white moon. Can't wait to start the horary. And I also want to redo the midpoint. So I have a whole bunch of stuff I want to do and I have surgery on Friday. So it's going to be very interesting how I'm going to get all of this done. But I am working on a on a presentation for the horary. So I'm going to try and do that even after my surgery if I can. Now, as we go to this Aries point, the first thing that we see here is this disease. All right. And then we got the black moon Lilith and we have Poseidon. And I will tell you that if you're anybody is interested, please go read the, the prediction by Nostradamus on this virus and what this virus was supposed to do. And with the black moon right there, equaling the midpoint of Hades and Neptune, the disease, we're supposed to change our ways. We really are supposed to, you know, kind of make our system more equal and that the selfish and the corrupt people, um, you know, either get their up and comings or learn to live a little uh, more humanity, humanitarian like. So now as we 
look at the next point, which is the 2230. And I'm going to do it through looking, here we go, right there. Oh, close in it, close, close, close. 2230, which is also 730 on the other side. Okay. Look at that. What do we have there? Oh, we have an ascendant there. How wonderful. Okay, it's not exactly there, but it's close enough that it's aspect. Wonderful. So we're, even though, <laughs> of course, we just did have the um, Harry and Meghan uh, interview, and that is a world thing. Um, it's really interesting um, how, uh, uh, the, and how she's a villain. And well, isn't that, we already talked about that, didn't we? In our chart. The marriage, the villain, okay? That's just really interesting how the chart... You know, astrology works whether you study or you don't. There, it isn't a belief system. And I really am tired of people saying, oh, you believe in that? It's not a belief system. Here's a case of you and I are looking at this chart and we're studying it. It's, it's going on. Whether you follow it or not. What I think is so interesting is the original government of this country. They all studied it. Just so interesting how we've gotten away from it. Okay, so now we're looking at 2230, where you have an Aries Poseidon. I did tell you that was going to be big. We also have an, a Poseidon uh, Astrea, which is not only is, are we going to be seeing things through the press, but the, res the issues will not be easily resolved. Okay, and that's not even getting into the rest of the asteroids, which I will do in a minute. Now, because I have my list, I'm going to go back through this. And um, the first place I'm going to talk about is that there is a Eureka on this, which I do believe is an aha moment, can be aha moments. So look for those in your personal life as you relate to things going on in the world. I'll give a really good example, that interview. Okay, look how close it was to the new moon, number one. Number two, it was an aha moment because a lot of people did not know the situation. So that was really good. It's also in the sun axis because it is about a couple, a married couple. And that's how astrology works. Well, I can tell you that the health, the we're still in a lot of pain because of the virus. I can tell you that. I can tell you. OK, that's still going on. That is not resolved. Um, we are getting vaccinated. We have all that healing happening, but we're still not out of the woods, just like they keep telling us. OK, and now the chart is telling us. So, you, you know, you don't need to even listen to them if you look at this. And if you're looking at that, this is telling you it's happening, whether you believe it or not. OK. Do what you can to help others. Circe falls into the Aries point. And I think that Circe is a, an incredible asteroid. Of course, it's very important in my chart. And it is about helping people, getting and giving help at the last minute. Okay? It's just a, a wonderful uh, asteroid for help and getting and giving. The um, next area that we're looking at is... Uh, prosopina, which is, and I talked about this very briefly, which is that there are some things in life that you have to do on your own. The only way you can do it is by yourself or on your own. You can only go that on your own. Now, the other thing I want to point out here, and this is not in the Aries axis, this more relates to that Neptune, but it does point out by square that when, no, it isn't even a square. It's a, um, it's an inconjunct, actually, that, I'm making sure I'm in the right place here. That was that. Oh, here it is. No, it is a square. It's definitely a square. That, um, I'm lost in my chart here. Be careful of lies. And again, that doesn't have anything to do with the Aries point. It has everything to do with Neptune. 
okay? Sometimes lack of clarity is about lies, plain and simple, plain and simple. Prosopina, oh, and the other thing, but this is an inconjunct, is endings. Endings. And you can go off on your own. Endings, okay, also make things have a lack of clarity. I just threw that in because I was looking at Fisher for lies, and then right below in the next area, I see atropos, the endings. As I get back into this Aries point, I'm going to be honest with you, there are a lot of wins. We really are coming out of this. And though, you know, there'll be probably some setbacks thanks to spring break and knuckledum behavior, um, I do believe it doesn't matter. Some places will continue to go down, okay? The, um, there will still be... I love this. There will still be this sense of why me? Why do we have to go? Why do people always do that? <laughs> I've been in a counseling frame for most of my life. I've been doing astrology and I read cards, so I counsel people. That's what I look at my work as being. And I've actually studied a little bit of counseling because it really helps when you do that kind of work, mostly because there are people that I will send to a counselor, okay? Or I'll recommend it. I don't send, I recommend. But I am going to say this, that the woe is me movement, it can be sometimes humiliating. So be careful of that, okay? Um, part of what we're going through is to make us stronger, tougher people. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, which I did forget, so going back to the sun-moon axis, not the Aries point, but still in the axis of the sun-moon, is an asteroid called Ransom. And I do believe that some of the bad behavior and lack of clarity and lies do have an effect of holding some people for ransom. But so do work environments particularly work environments that are not going to follow the CDC guidelines, but you still got to go to work anyway, okay? You can see how I'm not real fond of that whole system, okay? It's just wrong on every level. I can tell you, as I've been saying, this is going to go on and on and on. That I can promise you. And I can also promise you that there is more than one, whenever something with more than one business, more than one blame, more than, so there's a lot here about more than one, but one of the things I'm going to look at that I think is really healing is business. I think most businesses are starting to find their way. Now I'm being really optimistic here because I know some have closed, but I also know that if a business went down, that's an opportunity of a different kind. And I know that people, um, the woe is me, the why gotta, that's an asteroid, by the way. I, I see that, the woe is me, you know. But I, I also want to say, or the, the here we go again, um, you know, uh, with beginnings and all of that, um, businesses are going to be okay. Apollonia is in this access. And I think that what we're all going to be looking at as businesses, I know myself, we can afford to eat out. We do. We support those restaurants. I still tip the same amount of money as if I were there because it's necessary for them. So we can all make those kinds of decisions. The uh, last couple things I want to talk about we're going to be doing a lot of reminiscing in our mind and we're going to be doing a lot of remembering. And part of this will be because we are starting to get things back to normal and we're going to be remembering how we did do things. But also, I think there's going to be a comparison made with regards to that. So that pretty much sums up everything that was in the direct line of both of these axes. So let's come back. Mm. 
so I'm having a lot of trouble with the program, but I get it. It comes back. It, it, you know, it's slow. Sometimes I do these videos a couple of times. I'm hoping today is not one of them. But in any event, I wanted to come back. I wanted to thank you again for watching the video. Uh, comment, please. I've noticed that um, on the comments on the website, I had no idea where they were, and I only recently found them. So I want to apologize to the person I just answered this morning, Volcanus on the Midheaven. I think either that or I did answer it in the past. And, but in any event, it was still listed there, so I wanted to respond to it again. Um, number one. Number two, I am going to try to get to everybody who comments within at least a 24-hour period. So please comment. I love to hear from you. Uh, question me. You know, question me. These are educational. Okay, I'm not just about predicting the future. I'm about educating um, another group of astrologers, hopefully. So please, let me hear from you. And in the interim, as always, anytime I end these, I just want to say, until we meet again, I wish you only happy reading.